Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Matt here. Today, we're out here in the Azobo 787 as we continue to test FSFO version 5.4.4.0, which I hope to release the beta very, very soon. Before we get started, as always, a couple disclaimers. One is I should be doing my taxes, but instead I'm out here testing uh, FSFO. But because I do have a lot of other things to do, this will be a relatively uh, quick demonstration. It probably won't be a, a full flight. We'll just get through the pre-flight flow, maybe uh, taxi out to the runway and take off. We'll, we'll have to see. The second is um, I have yet to test this aircraft. I have... Uh, I coded this uh, several months ago, but have not had an opportunity to test it as I was focusing on the structure of uh, FSFO version 5.4.4. So this will be the first test. It could be catastrophic. So uh, if it is, we will delete the video and you will never know about it. If not, we'll get it uploaded today. All right, with that, uh, I already have FSFO connected to the simulator. The first thing I'm gonna do is check my flight plan. Uh, again, it looks like we're right uh, f uh, coming from the right airport from Bangor. The run takeoff runway is runway 33. According to the departure um, charts, my initial altitude will be 5,000. Uh, the uh, standard instrument departure is going to be no. This is a vectored uh, radar ATC vectored out of Bangor, so I'm going to keep that to no. According to my pre-performance uh, uh, calculations, the takeoff flaps will be 5. This gets us to our first limitation, the config in the 787. Uh, it has no uh, relevance as unfortunately uh, FSFO cannot read any of the local variables in the CDU or the EFB. Uh, so you will have to do that yourself. That's very different from all the other aircraft, which we can program the, the FMCs and CDUs for you. However, as I'll demonstrate here in just a little bit, it's relatively easy to do. All right, so that's our first limitation. Uh, packs, we're just going to uh, leave those to, to NA and let the uh, 787 computer handle it. This uh, matches my fuel and zero fuel uh, calculations that I did. I'm going to put an initial calculation in here of 58.6, which is what I pre-calculated. Uh, packs are 281. Uh, so this all looks good, and we will come back to this in just a little bit. I will set the new altitude to 2000 when FSFO gets within the uh, 10 nautical miles of the top of descent, it will automatically program the new altitude in there for you. Let's move over to the OFB now just to make sure our numbers are correct and we have the right sim uh, brief plan downloaded. I have added the takeoff weight uh, to the OFB uh, or OFP, excuse me, operational flight plan specific to this aircraft. As you'll see, when we program the CDU, you'll need this data in order to uh, appropriately uh, program the uh, the computer. So I've added it to here. We'll just scroll down. Uh, as you can see, I've also changed uh, how things operate from the previous demonstration of FSFO. In the previous video, you saw a second window pop up that went ahead and downloaded the ATIS information for you. However, some feedback from a couple of FSFO users said, hey, that's pretty intrusive. Any way we can get that in the uh, the main GUI? Absolutely. So now when FSFO goes out and downloads your SimBrief flight plan, uh, it will also download that ATIS information as long as you have get ATIS here uh, uh, set to on. So as you can see, no automated ATIS for Bangor. Smaller airport, but Boston we do. And we saw runway 33 is looks like the runway in use, which also comes up here and matches uh, the runway that uh, that we are going to be landing on in Boston. So everything looks right uh, from our operational flight plan perspective. Uh, as you'll note here, that auto is on, but it hasn't auto started the flow. Just a reminder, that's because we have negative one, set the pre-flight uh, flow delay. I want all these flows to uh, to occur uh, when they should, except for the pre-flight flow, because I like to have time to go through all those uh, variable numbers to ensure that data is correct. Next thing we'll do is we'll come to our radio frequencies. Uh, we are not flying on VATSIM, uh, so we're just going to use the, the real world uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, frequencies, and these all look correct. Moving over back to the home page, we are going to go ahead and initiate our pre-flight flow. And, uh, and watch the uh, co-pilot do his things. 
This is where the 787 is a little different. Good afternoon, uh, Captain. It actually starts the battery or, or applies power to the aircraft before it performs its safety uh, check. So a little bit different than the 787 and incorporated within FSFO. Next, you're going to see him work systematically through the panels in the, uh, in the correct order as he uh, continues his flow. You'll note down here, these are things that I have to do as the pilot in command. Passenger signs, this uh, gets us to another limitation. I can set the internal value in, uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Zobo 787, but it does not move the passenger signs. I'm still exploring to see if I can do that. Uh, however, I uh, have that set right now for the, uh, for the pilot in command to, uh, to go ahead and switch. And there's also another reason for that, which I will explain here at the end of the flow. Everything else, though, as you can see, FSFO can manipulate from the overhead panel. Checking to make sure the fuel pumps are off. Next, we'll get down to the uh, wing anti-ice. Again, working down, setting those in the auto position. There goes the nav light on. Cooling temperatures, you will even set them depending on how warm it is outside or how cold it is. And there goes our packs. The uh, 787, as the U787 drivers know, is an incredibly automated aircraft. So most things will get put into the uh, auto position, and then Hang out for the walk around. And then the uh, the plane knows what's what's to do from there. So the packs are on. I'm going to turn the sound down just a little bit, so you are not bothered. And uh, first thing we're going to do is now that the co-pilot is out doing his walk around, we are going to go ahead and uh, program the CDU. Quick disclaimer, I have not been into this aircraft in a, well, I don't think I've ever actually been into this aircraft, so, uh, but I have had experience with things like the quality wing 7887, so this could be, uh, this could be atrocious, my programming, uh, a little grace, uh, be very much appreciated. Uh, weight and balance, let's click that, oh, that's pretty cool, it looks like you can download your weight and balance from Simbrief, that is pretty cool. Loading, let's just make sure this is the right Simbrief. And it is, because remember we said we had 281 passengers and the cargo was 15,000 and yep, the fuel, this is spot on. So uh, pretty cool. You can download your fuel and weight. I found that accidentally. That is not what I wanted. I wanted actually the position. Here we go. We're going to put in our position so we can tell the computer where we are located in the world so we can align its navigational computers. We are Kilo Brava Golf Romeo. And then there it is. Now we'll come over to route. And this I do know from videos that you can actually download your uh, route right from Simbrief. And there's our route loaded. And then we'll just verify that is right. Delta, yep, this all looks right. So we'll execute that. Everything looks good so far. We'll request the wind uh, data. I did not know it could do that. Wow, you can even get wind data. That is pretty. That is pretty amazing for a default aircraft. I don't even know if we can refer to this as a default aircraft anymore uh, with all these pretty cool features. That's that's pretty that's pretty dang nice. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll go back to our init uh, reference. And now we'll go ahead and move over to our OFP. Uh, we have our zero fuel weight, which is going to be 365.8. Three six five point eight. Our reserve is going to be six thousand pounds. Short flight today. We do not need a lot of reserve. That's our correct uh, uh, altitude. Cost index looks like it's forty six. We'll put that in there. Center of gravity is six percent. Uh, now we can move over to our thrust limitation, and this is where we need to come over whoop, to the EFB. I forgot to initialize the flight. I'm not sure if that actually does anything in the. Uh, in the 787, although it is something you're required to do. Um, so we'll do it. Copy data from uh, the FMC. This should preload our uh, our airport and our runway. Oh, you know what? It would. I don't think we set our departure and, and we did not. Okay, so let's do that now. Runway 33, index, approach. I know the chart said 33. We're going to use 27, though, because it's just a straight in. Makes things a lot easier. Okay, we'll clear any discontinuities. As we said, it was an ATC vectored departure today. 
and then we'll go next next another vector and everything else looks good no more discontinuity so we are good to go now we'll come over to the performance and try to reload that data there we go condition is uh dry today uh no wind actually today so we can hit zero 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 the temperature is 11 celsius everything else looks right uh, we're going to use optimal we'll let the computer decide our flap settings and uh everything else i think i think we just need the center of gravity which we said was six uh, percent um i think that's everything what am i missing i think that's engine yep so we got everything let's go ahead and calculate it and now we'll come back over to the plan just to write these in. It looks like our derated temperature is going to be 53.9 and a derated tank uh, deed uh, take off two. So we're going to 50. We're just going to make that 53 point eh, make it 53.9 and our V speeds are 140, 145 and then 154. I'm just entering these in here. So when I come back over to the CDU, I will have this relevant uh, data uh, and I can check to make sure it's okay. Then output to FMC. All right, so now we can come over here, go back to the init red, make sure everything is okay, thrust limitation. And we said 53.9, 53.9. And that is our derated, so everything looks good there. And then we can go over to takeoff. We said flaps. Five, flaps five. Uh, there's our derated thrust. All the V speeds have been put it in. This all looks right, so we're going to accept this and then put the 6% uh, for our um, trim, which is now 8.75. And then you can see right there, our FMC pre flight is completed. So now let's go back and check to see how the uh, co pilot is coming. He is still on his walk around for the sake of time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, call him into the cockpit and continue. Walk around completed. All right. You can see since we have the ground service. agent is ready. Are we okay to start boarding? We're going to start boarding our... Uh, yes. We're all set up here. Our passengers. Next, uh, after the passengers, the uh, co-pilot started to uh, tune the radio. I'm actually going to put a wait command in there too. Excuse me, I'm making a note. Be just good to wait before you tune the radio before the uh, the packs automatically start loaded. Again, this is all stuff you can do yourself in the editor. You can make the checklist whatever, however you want to, um, or sequence. It does not matter. The editor is getting uh, a lot more powerful as we continue to add things that people want. As you can see here, all you have to do is go in and select whatever action you want and then the value for that action and uh, and you can manipulate the flows and checklist to your uh, to meet your specific virtual airlines uh, operations. So we just heard the ATIS information as the co-pilot automatically tuned that uh, ATIS information based on what was over here in the radio panel that we looked at earlier. Okay. Now you can see right here, we have a wait command. So he's waiting for the next action. So what that does is it keeps the flow active um, until we turn on these passenger signs. So until I set this to auto or on, the flow will remain active. This gives you an opportunity to, to ensure that uh, whatever it is you have to do can be done before the flow uh, concludes. So that's why this wait command is here and why I removed the seatbelt signs uh, from the co-pilot doing it because if, if the co-pilot went ahead and set even the internal value to auto or on this wait command would be broken and the flow would just uh, end. So program CDU, I have IR, uh, IFR clearance, um, passenger signs I'll put on in just a minute. Air data is set to auto. So we are all set to go. If we move this to the on position, the flow should end and there it is. So that is uh, also critical if you uh, want to do realistic flows and you want the flow to stay active while you continue to do your portion while the co-pilot has completed his actions. 
Dear passengers, this We're going to get a safety message. Aircraft doors have been closed. In order to push back on time, all passengers must be seated with your seatbelts fastened. All luggage must be stored in the overhead bin or under the seat in front of you. The cabin crew will be passing through to make their final safety checks before push back. Thank you and welcome aboard. Okay, that was a brief uh, welcome aboard message. If you wanted uh, a longer, more realistic one, all you would have to do is click this button right here in the option. And instead of hearing that message, you would hear this. Welcome to your flight. On its way to one of our many destinations across the globe. Okay, that, that uh, WAV file though is four minutes long, so uh, I didn't want us to have to wait for that. Um, all you have to do to play that WAV file or any safety uh, message from any uh, airline that you choose is to find one, make sure it's in the .wav format, it has to be a WAV file, and put that in your documents, FSFO underscore version five sounds folder. So it will go right there with this checkbox box, FSFO would play any safety message uh, that you have here. It has to be named just like this too. Um, also, if it's a cargo flight, the safety message will not play. Uh, I hope for uh, obvious reasons, but it has to be uh, a passenger flight or you will not get that safety message. All right, so that's that real quick. Uh, let's get now to our, our pre-flight checklist. Um, again, this will be another limitation. Unfortunately, FSFO does not have action or access to the checklist. So this is something you're going to have to do yourself. If you do not uh, check off the checklist, you'll get a warning uh, up here on the ICAST display telling you uh, that the checklist has not been completed. So make sure you do that. And uh, you can do it either via voice or button, we'll do this one in button. And it looks like we've gotten our dispatch message, dispatch, pass message, dispatch, whoa, what is wrong with me? Uh, message uh, telling us we're all cleared. Uh, we still have passengers coming on board. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna speed that up. Anytime you have an active loading in progress, you could just click this button again and it will uh, automatically complete it if you're Captain, in a hurry. Captain, all passengers are aboard. We should have everyone seated in the next five to 10 minutes. Okay, there we go. So all the passengers are on board and I'm gonna have to make a note. Uh, typically you don't want the safety message to play while half your passengers are still on the jetway or sitting outside. So we will have to make sure boarding is completed and I'm just making a note of that. Like I said, if that's the only error we have though, that's pretty good. Okay, so uh, let's get into the pre-flight checklist, and we'll use uh, buttons for this one. Pre-flight checklist. Parking brake. Sit. Fuel control switches. Cut off. Departure briefing. It will be a left seat takeoff from Kilo, Bravo, Golf, Romeo, 2, Kilo, Bravo, Oscar, Sierra. The reported runway conditions are normal. Taxi route is per ATC instructions. We'll be departing on runway 3, 3. Climbing via the departure procedures to an initial altitude of 5,000 feet. Standard reject and emergency procedures apply. Any questions? No. Completed. Pre-flight checklist complete. Okay, there's the checklist. As you can see, it mimics what's in here, what uh, the 787 has, uh, except for the, um, the departure briefing. If you don't want the departure briefing in there, you can go into the uh, editor and just remove it. And then you can either click on the button on page three of the GUI, which we'll look at here in just a minute and click the button. Or you could just say departure briefing. You can call it via voice. Uh, I have it in there because I just like the automation of the departure briefing occurring right after the uh, pre-flight flow. So now you can see the uh, co-pilot is going ahead and he's starting the APU uh, as we get ready for... Um, our engine start and for our pushback and then he will work his way down he will turn on the hydraulic pumps uh, and then uh, turn on the uh, the fuel pumps as well all shown here ending with the uh, the, the, the beacon lights my job is to if you uh, have a virtual airline to make sure you start the a cars to get taxi clearance and also set the trim or check to make sure the trim is accurate all right, just waiting now for that APU to fire up, to spool up, and then we will start the uh, the pushback sequence. And in the next checklist, we'll use our voice just to give some uh, difference between the two. So far, so good, though. I'm <laughs> cautiously optimistic that uh, we have a good working um, 787 here. Hmm. 
shouldn't take two clicks to turn that off. I'm going to have to take a look at the VNAV and LNAV. All right, fuel pumps are coming on. And there's the before start checklist. Uh, let's go ahead and start the before checklist, I mean, and we'll use voice. Before start checklist. Before start checklist. Doors. Closed. Passenger signs. On. MCP. Speed. One, five, four. Heading. Three, three, zero. Altitude. Five, zero, zero, zero. Set. Takeoff speeds. V1, one, four, zero. VR, one, four, five. V2, one, five, four. Checked. CDU preflight. Completed. Trim. Set. Briefing. Completed. Beacon lights. On. Before start checklist complete. Okay, I happen to notice an error on the checklist and it said uh, close, close. That should say doors. I will get that fixed. Doors on the before start checklist. As you can see, voice works pretty good. Um, there we go, all written down. So let's go ahead and uh, start our pushback and we will use, uh, we'll use FSFO's pushback. This is a long aircraft, so we do not need to go far. 50, well, let's try 55 feet, should work. Ground from cockpit. Go ahead, ready for pushback. Connecting tug. I'll let you know when the pin's inserted. All right, now we're just waiting for the pin to insert, and then uh, we should uh, be able to get pushback. That's another uh, unfortunate. I don't. I don't have access to any of the uh, ICAST panels. I would love to be able to set those. Like for example, when you're running uh, the uh, flight control test, I would love to be able to set this to the to the flight control so you can. Uh, watch the uh, the flight controls as you should in real life, but unfortunately, just don't have access to those. And you can look at the doors to make sure that uh, they're all closed. I wish we could set those. Steering insert and release parking brake. Maybe we will at one point, but we we do not have access to them uh, right now. Just checking to make sure the APU is on, and it is. All right, so let's go ahead and release the brake. Starting push. All right, so we're starting the push. Clear to start engine. Okay, let's go ahead and start engines. Start engines. So FSFO, your co-pilot just to make check to make sure that the APU was running. It is, and now he's going to start the uh, the engines. Now, uh, there are two settings for engine start on the 787. You have a value of uh, zero and one, I believe. Let's take a look, so we can talk about the difference. Uh, on the value is uh, of zero is he's just going to start them simultaneously. Again, 787 is highly automated. You do not have to wait for the end percentage to get above 22, for example, before introducing fuel into the ignition system. The computer does it all for you. Uh, so on a normal day, he would go ahead and just start both and introduce fuel simultaneously into the system automatically. If the temperature was below Engine 20 one started. If the uh, if the uh, engine two started, if the engine uh, one cutout, engine two go. cutout. There's our cutout, so we are good to go. Uh, if that if the temperature is below uh, 20 degrees, stopping degrees, pushback. Set parking brake. He would do that simultaneously. No bar disconnected. See you on the left side with the pin. Have a great flight. We keep getting interrupted. Uh, thank you. We'll uh, go ahead and look for you on the left side with the pin. Now, if the temperature is above 20, he would then start one at a time, like you would see in a traditional Boeing uh, aircraft, if you will. All right, so the engine start sequence, we're just waiting uh, for the engines to stabilize. And since we're in auto mode again, he should start the, uh, the after start flow. We're just waiting for that now. Just giving the engines a little bit of time. And that will give me time to go to the... All engine stable before taxi checklist. All right, so we have 10 seconds now uh, before the flow. Again, you can set this to whatever you want. I like to have just a little bit of time. 
If I was using GSX, that would be a good time to confirm engine start and do those other things. And we push back too far. Again, this is a long aircraft, so you don't need to push back too far. And again, he's uh, going through the flows. Clear taxi on the right. lights. Clear on the left. Taxi lights just went on. Just cleared us on the right, cleared us on the left. So we are good to go. Uh, let's go ahead and run our checklist. Uh, we'll use button mode for this. Before taxi checklist. Anti-ice. Check. Recall. Check. Auto brakes. Rejected takeoff. Flight control task. Okay, this was uh, good because we have to test this. Uh, again, 787 has a fly-by-wire. So this, I uh, have to make sure, hopefully this will work. Flight control task. Yeah, so he's not registering the flight controls. Um, let me see here. And he's going to repeat. Well, it looks like it's good. Flight control task. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bypass this by holding control all and then making a note. Check. Brake test. Uh, we have to ex uh, increase the speed uh, in order to uh, test the brakes. Let's make sure everything else is here. We said flight controls. And it looks like, oh, APU needs to be added too. I'm going to push pause for one second, guys, so you don't have to wait while I make notes. Okay, sorry about that. Made some notes so we can make sure we add APU to the before taxi checklist as well as take a look at the uh, the, the flight control test for the 787. I know it uh, it uses a fly-by-wire, so uh, uh, it's probably not reading the full de left and right deflection. All right, let's go ahead and uh, continue with our brake, uh, brake test. Again, you don't have to have this as the checklist. Uh, you can remove that. I like to have it because, again, it has a legitimate use. Uh, let's go ahead and tap the brakes. Check. Before taxi checklist complete. At From the flight deck, wanted to take a few moments to welcome you on board and thank you for flying with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're already uh, taxiing out to our assigned runway and uh, are expecting an on-time departure. Um, so for now, just sit back, relax, and we'll have you in the air shortly. Yeah, as you can see now, the, uh, the message uh, no longer locks the GUI, uh, so that was fixed too. In this message, so far so good, almost almost a hundred percent. There's the dispatch message clearing us to runway three three with our departure frequency. Probably shouldn't be pushing my luck by continuing this, but I'd like to see if we can uh, if the takeoff phase goes well. So after this, I uh, got to test start testing the CRJ. The reason why I kind of switched and uh, uh, did the 787 uh, today is because uh, this aircraft is not nearly as complicated as all the other ones. It's uh, fairly easy uh, to work with. There are far less systems that you can unfortunately manipulate because there's fewer LVARs available to us. So it just made it a little bit easier, but the CRJ is, uh, is still very much... Uh, uh, in the porting phase, and then we can start uh, hopefully with the the last two, um, with the any build uh, 300 or A310, uh, and then the Just Flight 146. Again, though, that the Just Flight 146, as I said in the uh, the last video, I am just not um, uh, excited about doing because it is a very complicated aircraft to code. Uh, it's just it just is, um, and and. Unfortunately, it's a great aircraft. Just a lot of people just don't seem to use it. Um, I thought it, uh, it was a great aircraft. Uh, I love the Any build. I wish more people use that. As I said before, my favorite uh, simulator aircraft of all time remains the Level D 767. I can't explain it. Just something about it. Uh, the Any builds A300 kind of reminds me, or 310, excuse me, kind of reminds me very much of that aircraft. Obviously, we saw pictures of the PMDG 777. Cannot wait for that. Uh, I've already got the structure for that aircraft. We'll be able to get that one out really, really soon. Um, so I'm excited about that uh, once that comes out. And I, ask, I do plan to do the FSS uh, Embraer. Um, I'm just waiting for it to get to a little more stable state, but it will get done as well as the, um, the good turbo power up. So the ATR, the uh, Zobo ATR, I'm looking forward to doing too. Those are all planned this year. Once we get this structure in place, uh, for the more realistic checklist and flows, which you're you're kind of witnessing right now, we can really start to focus on aircraft profiles. I really want to get this right 
uh, first, and then we'll start uh, getting the, the rest of the aircraft profiles moved over. And then we're going to switch to the company because that's something different for me, as I've explained before. Um, building profiles all the time can get a little bit monotonous. Uh, doing something a bit different like the company uh, is, is a little funner, for lack of a better term. Um, a little more energetic. So literally looking forward to building that out as, uh, as we go forward. All right, we're just going to come up here and make a turn. And then the before takeoff low uh, should start automatically. Uh, I think I had it within 800 feet of the, uh, or excuse me, 500 feet of the uh, runway threshold. We should get our ROS message too. We'll have to Approaching figure out that. runway three, three. There's the bras meshes. As you can see, we have now the Honeywell. We're not using Sappy anymore, so more realistic. We're going to make this turn, and then the co-pilot should automatically start the before takeoff flow, which means the lights will come on and all that relevant stuff. There's the transponder. And now let's go with the before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. On runway three. Before takeoff three. checklist. Flaps. Set. Cabin crew. Cabin crew prepare for takeoff. Notified. Before takeoff checklist complete. Guys will have to excuse me, I have to cough, so I'm gonna push you on pause. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Let's go ahead and uh, and start our run here, and you can do uh, do that by commanding takeoff power. Takeoff power. Set. Okay, and now we're here. We go. Whoop! I got that break on. I apologize. I don't know why. Press that. Check. Keep a little forward pressure down. <coughs> Speed alive. Check. Good. Check. Good cross check there. Okay. Oh, I forgot to do the stabilizer trim. There we go. Rotate. Okay, so we'll rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. Gear up. All right, there's our gear up. Four hundred feet. Four hundred feet call. We'll pitch down. We're pitching up too high. Smooth pitch down. Almost at acceleration altitude. Acceleration altitude. All right. Let's pitch down and grab some speed. Autopilot. There's the autopilot coming on. Autopilot one on. Okay, he should have done that. Let me write that down. And we should accelerate now. And let's go direct to... Oh, I forgot to do the checklist. That was the warnings I think we were getting. Yeah, no worries. We'll do the after here and just a little bit. After 2,500 feet, uh, there we go. Right on cue. The uh, Flaps one. Went ahead. Flaps one automatically did the uh, the automatic flow. The flaps are happening right in sequence, right where they should. So we got that it's looking pretty good. Flaps up. Flaps up. Right on cue, the flaps are coming up because we have the right B speeds. Let's go ahead and run the after takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist. Landing gear. Up. Flaps. Up. After takeoff right. checklist complete. So far, everything looks good. Let's come down here to the... Uh, after takeoff checklist, everything looks good. Then we'll come back to the uh, CDU. Um, and then let's go direct to Kenny Bunkport. Okay. And we should start turning here in a little bit. And there's our turn. We're at 250 knots, so the computer's slowing down. Set flight level, 260. Flight level, 260. And there we go. As you can see, uh, capable of doing the uh, 
the commands for us. Be nav on. Let's go up now and uh, whoop, go, let me go ahead and click this as we start to uh, climb. So far, so good. I think what we'll do is we'll just take it up to uh, 10,000 feet uh, just to ensure that uh, the lights come off. Uh, actually, let's go to 18,000 feet. Uh, let's make sure that we, we go to standard altitude or standard uh, altimeter. So far, so good. We're at 35 minute mark. So as you can see, we got this aircraft up uh, pretty good, pretty good time in a realistic manner. Climbing now, heading to our uh, direct to Kenny Bunk Board. Again, guys, to clear the messages, all you have to do is double-click here and double-click here, and you can clear the message. There's our uh, approach information, or our arrival information. Just looking for that 10,000 feet, I want to make sure the lights come off, and then we'll pause it as we go to 18,000 just to make sure... Um, uh, that the lights go on or come off, excuse me. Just all part of the testing. Passing 10,000 feet. Okay, there's the lights all off along with the runway. So in the taxi lights, because we have that coupled, everything looks really good. I'm just going to run another quick test just to make sure uh, we check the altitude voice command. Let's check the heading voice command. Set heading. Two, three, four. Heading. Two, three, four. Okay. So the heading now looks good. Uh, we check the heading. We just try to align it with uh, the LNAV. Uh, again, the, the speech uh, recognition engine was completely ripped out and re-put back in. I add what's called a, a confidence level. Uh, so FSFO will now look at whatever it is you're saying and... Uh, I think we set the confidence level. If it's 75% uh, confident, it is what it thinks you're saying. If that makes any sense, it will execute the command. So hopefully that will get rid of uh, some of the uh, misinterpreted speeches that were occurring uh, along the along the way. So uh, what else do we have? The autopilot did not go on on takeoff. He called it, but he did not set it. So, so far, guys, four bugs. Not bad. Not bad at all. I have everything else uh, down here. Should be able to get these fixed uh, today. Unfortunately, like I said, I do have to do my taxes. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm going to pause it until we get to 18,000. Uh, let's just make sure that the uh, pressure does get set to standard. Okay, we're at flight level 170. Uh, so we should be coming up to our transition altitude of 18,000 feet. In the real world, by the way, they, they don't wait until they actually get to the, the transition altitude. If you're cleared above it, uh, then usually that's at the time uh, to set it. But again, I don't know uh, what the what the ATC is telling you. So that's why. Okay, that looks great. It's set at the standard. Uh, let's make sure it's set at the standard on both sides. And it did. So we are looking really good here as far as uh, performance is uh, is considered. 150 uh, nautical miles uh, from our airport. Looks like we're at gate Bravo 166, which makes sense. That's a heavy gate at Logan. So it looks like FSFO assigned us a uh, good airport. Again, uh, Lewiston, it looks like it has as a closest airport to us if we needed to make an emergency landing. Of course, we'd have to dump a lot of fuel. Remember we talked about earlier, if you didn't want to, um, uh, uh, excuse me, if you didn't want your departure briefing as part of your checklist because you wanted to, to mimic exactly what was uh, displayed here, uh, you can then use buttons by just navigating to page three and clicking it, or you can just use voice command and say departure briefing. Flexibility is the key to uh, FSFO, uh, which is why um, uh, I like that, uh, that option. Uh, again, I like to have it automatic, so I just put it in my checklist. You do not have to. The departure flow is uh, currently set in the configuration. I believe I have mine set from 15, uh, no, excuse me. Yep, 15 nautical miles. Once I get within 15 nautical miles of the top of descent here, um, the departure flow will automatically be, uh, be initiated. And we can see what the departure flow is by just simply uh, looking at the editor. 
and this is where you would always go to uh, make the 787 uh, profile mimic whatever it is you want. It's up to you. And if something's missing, let me know. Again, a little bit limited with the with the Azobo 787, but certainly uh, better than we uh, than we had before uh, with the uh, with the pre uh, Surface Pack update. So thanks to the guys over at Working Title. Okay, so it looks like a couple things. He should set our auto brakes. We have a value of seven, uh, which means he's gonna seven equals based on the FSFO flight plan. So he should set the auto brakes to three in this case, because that's what we have set here on the flight plan with a value of seven. Uh, everything else looks good. We are almost up to our uh, cruising altitude. We might as well get up there. And I'll tell you what, I think we're going to go to the descent. I just want to make sure those things are, are working. The auto brake is being set. Um, yeah, so let's make sure uh, that happens. And then that's my cue to also program the uh, the CDU. Okay, we're almost at our flight level two six zero. The captain or the co-pilot should uh, make a cabin uh, message at that time. Our announcement. From the flight deck, we've reached our cruising altitude. Uh, we hope you enjoyed uh, today's flight so far, and uh, we're going to do the best we can up here uh, to make this as smooth as possible. However, uh, when that seatbelt sign is on, we ask that you remain seated as uh, turbulence is unpredictable and can incur at any time. However, when the seatbelt sign is off, you are certainly free to get up and move about the cabin. Once again, welcome aboard. Okay, there we go, uh, the cabin announcement, and uh, I will come back once we are close. The captain has turned off the seatbelt sign. You're free to get up and use the lavatories. However, we ask that you do not form a line at the front of the aircraft. Okay, so there's the cabin announcement. And you might have heard the ding uh, from the the seatbelt sign. Again, I can set it internally. It just, I it, it has no, um, it won't move the switch. So that's the problem we're having right now. So... Uh, make sure uh, that's one of the limitations that you're aware of. The captain uh, internally to the sim can set the the value to off, but it just doesn't register uh, with the actual switch itself. So there could be something I'm missing. I'll continue to investigate that, but that is one of the, the limitations uh, with the 787. All right, uh, I'm going to push pause, and as we get closer to that 15 nautical mile, uh, so we can watch the uh, descent flow. Primarily, I'm concerned to make sure he sets the auto brake. Uh, so we'll be back then. Okay, guys, we're back as we're approaching top of descent, uh, three nautical miles from when the descent flow should occur. Uh, release for the beta of 4.4 uh, with beyond ATC's imminent, in, uh, imminent release. Um, I'm going to try to do at least a co-release on the um, on the beta, making this version uh, accessible. Oh, there we go. So right on cue and set it as it should. That's a good test. Uh, so getting back, the, the plan is to have FSFO 5.4.4.0 uh, available in a beta at least uh, at the same time that the Beyond ATC is also uh, released. Um, really, uh, really looking forward to that. Although I haven't simmed in over a year uh, just due to time and uh, my current uh, job and where I'm at. Um, that is all coming to an end here in the next couple months, and I certainly hope... I'll uh, have an opportunity to um, uh, start simming again and definitely can't wait for Beyond ATC. Been waiting for a sim or an ATC that integrates with Batsum to provide coverage where there is none in the in the Batsum. So this is this is a game changer for me and excited about that and using FSFO with that. All right, so it uh, looks like our V speeds are going to be at 143 and 43. And we're going to have a flaps 30. Uh, I thought we set that already. Did FSFO, did we already? Yep, he already set that. So then he set it to zero. So everything is working as it should, um, which is fantastic. Got a couple things here to fix up. I think that's a good time to kind of stop this video as we approach uh, the top of descent. And you got a good, uh, you got a good, uh, 
kind of view of what uh, FSFO is capable of with the new updated uh, Zobo 787. Again, it will and should work with the uh, Kuru and Horizon. You saw FSFO correctly set the flaps on the way out as long as as well as make the correct flap calls. They should adjust for the reduced flap detents within the Dash 8 and Dash 9. So uh, let's go ahead and run the descent checklist and then uh, we'll say goodbye from there. Descent checklist. Recall. Check. Auto brakes. Set. Landing data. Check. Approach briefing. We're expecting the ILS approach for runway. Three, three, left. The minimum altitude is 200 feet. The reported runway conditions are normal. We can expect to park at gate. Bravo, one, six, six. In case the of captain around, has turned on the we'll seatbelt sign. In a moment, we will be coming heading. through the cabin to collect your trash. I'm good. Completed. Descent checklist complete. There we go. So there's the descent checklist. There's the uh, the passenger or the, the flight attendants letting them know that we're approaching top of descent and uh, making their way around. That's, I think, a great place to stop. Um, incredibly happy where this uh, test went. Got five things to fix, uh, which I hope to do here this evening. As we said, we're getting closer to uh, at least getting 5.4.4.0 out in the beta. I cannot uh, stress this enough. This is a massive change. Uh, please, please, if you're updating, read. Uh, when you do the installer, there'll be a giant banner that says warning. Please read. Uh, as you go through the installer, read those steps because uh, this, again, as we talked about in the previous video, there's a lot of fundamental structural changes within FSFO. And if you don't read that and, and restore your checklist, re-download your, your, uh, your region, your sound packs, uh, readjust your ground uh, settings within the editor, uh, there will be a little frustration for you. But we put exactly what to do within that readme file. Uh, so please take a look at that. And then, uh, yeah, and then just execute it. And then 5.4.4.0 should hopefully meet the uh, the requirements that, that most of you have asked for. One other thing before we do go, I've been uh, constantly asked about an animated um, co-pilot. Yes, at one point we will get to that. It is within uh, uh, my abilities with a caveat. I won't do it if uh, if I can't improve upon what it looks like initially. My my opinion, at least the ones that I I've uh, worked with, and and to an extent, uh, some of the the competition, they look really creepy. And if I can get over that kind of creepiness and 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 provide a real animated uh, thing that's our uh, co-pilot that's visually not an immersion killer, then absolutely I'll go ahead and do that. But right now, I I don't have those skills yet, um, but I'm still developing them, and and hopefully uh, I can get there at some point. But for right now, that, that will be down the road. But yes, it is planned. Uh, and no, I will not charge you. It will be part of FSFO, uh, just like Roz is part of FSFO and, and the pushback. I, I don't like to charge for additional things. Uh, I do not like the nickel and dime, uh, my fellow simmers. I, I don't do this for the money. Um, yeah, I do it because it's it's fun and I like interacting with uh, fellow simmers. All right, so that's about the animated uh, co-pilots. For those of you who stuck around this far, uh, hope to see you guys again soon. Look forward to chatting with you over on Discord. Uh, with that, until next time, goodbye.